Hello and welcome to my channel. This particular video is about this cheap Chinese diesel heater. If you continue to watch the video you will see the various problems with this machine and how we're going to fix them and also we're going to show you how the water system is going to work because this machine shouldn't really be put into a camper van but I'm going to adapt it so that it can be. This could be a very big game changer for all those DIYers out there. Stay tuned and continue watching. Now on this video I will reveal the secret what was in the box but first I've got to mock up the system. So what I'm going to do is show you how I'm going to do it um, I'm also going to put a few things together. Um, one of the first things I've noticed is the base plate won't fit properly onto the top of here. So <clears throat> typical Chinese stuff. I'm going to have to drill a hole in that. But the other thing is this seal, if you can see on here, that's a round bit and a round bit and that's a flat bit. So this actually fits really well on here, but it doesn't seal at the bottom. So if I can get that on, a bit of a shibugi. If I push that on, I don't know if you can see there, but nowhere near. And a gap under here. It's like they've just taken a normal 5 kilowatt and used the same surround and just drilled a hole. I had one of these made and somebody somewhere hasn't even seen what's going on. So you should be able to see a bit closer now. So you can see here, this seal doesn't even wrap around this rib here there is no rib under there the rib goes around here as I showed earlier because this is just a straight edge so the whole thing's a bit of a cock a hoop really so what I'm thinking the best thing to do because when the air blows in one side and out the other side the air will blow out of here because this cover is supposed to be sealed so basically, what I'm going to do, what I think is the best option, I'll just take that off. There you go. I think here, it'd be better if I took this lip off all the way around, and the same on this side here, trimmed it back, and then at least this seal will sit flush to the base then. And if there is a little bit of a gap in there, well, I can maybe shove a little bit of um, mastic or something like that in there. And then we'll have a tight seal. And then the base plate can then be fitted on top. But the problem with the base plate is even that, that it doesn't go right down properly. It seems to get caught halfway on these threads. So the holes on that actually need opening up a bit more. But hey, cheap Chinese products, <laughs> this is what you've got to expect. The, I know the actual machine works all right because I've seen it reviewed and up and running on, a, on another video. And I bought this off the guy who did the review and he had it working okay, not so bad. He was quite pleased with it. The actual machine itself works okay because they're quite simple products really. Um, but there's stuff that just doesn't fit. Things that he never actually fitted in his review, he didn't bother with. But I'm finding out myself now when I'm actually coming to do the job properly to, to actually fit it into a van. Now I know this, this particular product isn't meant to be fitted in a camper van. Like I said before in the other video, it's more like for a, you know, a truck cab to keep the, um, the occupant warm when he's camping overnight. <clears throat> And the water taps into the coolant system which keeps 
the um, the engine you know um, warm so that it starts the next day of the truck if you're in extreme cold temperatures and as I've said before there is a bit of a hoo-ha with the camping industry about this because people are saying oh great they've now invented something that's going to heat your water as well but then there's a hell of a lot of people saying well this is ridiculous it, it won't work in a camp van there's lots of problems which we'll address when I mock up the system um, and some of those problems I will actually like I say address and eliminate those problems if possible so let's just get on with this I need to get this taken off and then we can put this seal down and then that's the first job done So now this seal fits tight and flush. Let's get that closer look. The seal now fits tighter and flush tight to the to the body of the um, machine. So I don't know where it's going to land exactly. There's there's a gap there. Look, you can see a gap there. But this is what we're going to. This is why we've knocked it down so it's not lifted up and made even more of a gap. But this now is flush with round here so we're going to achieve a better seal so I'll get this pop back onto the machine and get that on and we'll move on to the next stage actually before we do move on to the next job while this is still naked shall we say I'll just um, show you the machine basically and just explain a few things what are a little bit different to this, the water one, to the standard air ones. Obviously, I don't know of any water ones that exist, but it's all I've done. They've basically taken a five kilowatt standard air heater and they've modified the top. Now, I'm not going to take it apart. Um, I'm not here to dismantle the machine, this video. Um, but I'll explain. Basically, the water goes in and it runs down channels inside here, up and down, up and down, and then it comes back out heated. Likewise with the air, this fan spins, blows the air past all these fins, and it heats the air up as well and blows out as hot air. So cold air into there, comes through, hot air out. Cold water in there, wiggles in and out, comes out hot. And it really is as simple as that. The burn chambers inside it makes this casket get hot and the air and the water try to cool it down. So basically you've got your two water ports, you've got your exhaust, you've got your air in and you've got your fuel in. It's really quite simple. On the bottom here, I said the top air in, but on the bottom is your water heat exchanger. That's really the only difference between this machine and uh, an air machine basically one that just does air so on the other side we've got the glow plug which comes on at the beginning and it stays on until it comes to temperature and that's when you will use 10 amps 11 amps but when it gets to temperature this switches off and you can start um, your machine up and bring it down to low temperature whatever you like but that's basically it then you've got the EC unit um, which is the brains of the outfit and that will control that will control this um you well actually saying that this controls the ECU unit. So basically that's about it really. I need to do something with this though. I don't like the look of it. A lot of Chinese writing on there, it needs um painting out or something. Anyway, that's about it. So let's move on to the next stage. Right. 
So the next job is to just build um, a workstation or something to just put the machine on so we can test it all out. So I've built this little contraption. So the next stage after that is to then build the base plate which will go on top of here. So if I just move that, pull this in here, just check the camera and make sure that you're in view. So this base plate would basically sit on here. Now the problem we've got, this is the next problem. This, the holes that have been drilled out to fit this machine doesn't fit. It's not quite um, accurate, shall we say. So I've got to redrill some of these holes a little bit bigger so this plate can sit down further onto the seal, basically unless it's not meant to, if somebody can tell me that, but I'm just guessing that the, with it being a bit of a Chinese product, the engineering, the precision's not that great. I'm assuming this is not meant to be like this. So I'm gonna get this drilled out a little bit more and it can sit down. Then I can sit this on top of the station. We can bolt all the other bits to it, set the system up, put the electric to it, and we can test this out. Right, so basically what I've got to do is just drill these um, four holes. This is where, the, this, these are the mounting holes here, yeah, where you mount the um, machine onto and tighten it. So basically this hole needs to be a bit more that way, this hole needs to be a bit more that way, that way and that way. Um, I can't re-drill another hole because it, it'll just go off centre. So it's all I can do is really make it a little bit bigger. So. I'll get on with that and then once that's done we can then start setting the system up that's the first thing we need to do a problem with this one because it's already breached the other hole and it's just trying to lock into there maybe I don't need to do it maybe I can just file it no I'm gonna have to maybe try and file that right so as you know I've made this um, setup so that I can mount the, the machine but this will be a similar setup to what's going on in the van because I need the machine raised off the floor because there's no point drilling water pipe holes out of in the floor going out of the van and then another tool to bring the water pipes back in the van. So I need to access them inside the van. So everything's going to be raised. So this mock up here to test it out is going to be very similar to how I'm going to actually build it or fit it in the van. So. I've got this base plate done. I've drilled the holes off. Um, I managed to get that one done by doing a, a drill in reverse, a slightly smaller one. I've noticed this plate, I, I don't understand what's going on with their psychic with building these things, but this plate, it's been sprayed and all these holes are yellow inside, except these two here. So this plate must have been for something else and they've grabbed this and just drilled two holes. Pretty much like the machine where they've done it in the plastic bodywork. So the whole thing's a bit of a, I don't know, prototype to them, I think. That, that's the only thing I can think of. I think I've bought their prototype. But anyway, the idea is that this will sit on here. So I'll just screw some bracing brackets there. Put the plate on there and sit the machine on there. And I'm going to do this as well for the setup for the mock-up and the bench test. So let's just get on with the next bit. I'm going to take all the gear into the house. I'm going to build everything, set all the water pumps up and everything else upstairs because it's a bit cold down here. And then eventually we'll get it fired up.
is my little setup. It's all temporary, of course, and I do apologize if the camera's a little bit shaky, but the camera's in my hand, so I can show you around this piece of apparatus. So basically, everything is representative at the moment. So here, we have a glass jar, which represents the diesel tank. Here, we have a bucket, which represents the hot water tank. And here, we have a glass jar that represents the expansion tank. Now that may give you a clue as to how I'm going to rig this hot water system up. So here we have the blue pipes. These of course are representative at the moment. They are not the correct pipes. The correct pipes are here as shown. This is the correct heater hose. Another clue. Right, we have the water pump here, of which the water will be drawn from the expansion tank along this line here, down into the water pump where the pump will force the water up in this direction, straight into the inlet port, water port of the machine. Basically, it will then be heated up inside the machine partially, and then brought out this pipe and straight into the well, this at the moment is a bucket, but it will be the hot water tank, heating the hot water up in the tank. The water will then be drawn back and dropped into the expansion tank, of which there will be a perpetual motion of it going round and round and round all the time, getting hotter and hotter and hotter until it heats the water up in this tank to the right temperature. Now I'm not expecting for the water to just go run through this system direct. There's going to be something attached to these pipes and it's in the box and that's the secret of how I'm going to do it. So let's get it unveiled and I'll show you the next stage. Right, so now you know how my system's going to work in theory. Um, you need to know what's going on with the tank and the key to that is in this box. So I've been withholding this, it's been a bit of a secret, but I did say I would in, unveil it at some point in the video. So basically, what's in here is what is going to make my new Chinese diesel air and water heater functional in my camper van. So if I just whip this off, you may guess this already, but here it is. There you go it's a matrix basically so in theory this is going to be dropped into the tank this is what's going to heat my hot water up this is what's going to keep my machine operational without scaling up and without rusting up because I will have a coolant system running through this and the heat from the coolant system will be dissipated out of here and into my hot water tank that is the general idea. So let's move on and see what's gonna happen next. Okay, so we've now connected the matrix to the pipe system. So this pipe system is now complete to illustrate how I want to set up the system. So here, the hot water will come out, it will run along this pipe and it will go into the matrix. The matrix is now sat in the temporary makeshift tank. Now this matrix will be elevated to allow convection of the, um, the heat. So the cold water will go underneath and it will rise and be replenished with more cold water. So now you can see the setup that I intend to use in my camper van. Um, if you take a look at this diagram, this will show you in better detail the whole setup of the water system or the hot water system. Now the tank itself is going to be different to a normal tank, hot water tank, um, because my tank will basically drain off fully. So it will be a vented tank. Um, I'll, I'll explain all that another time, possibly when I'm actually building the tank system. But for now, on this video, you just need to see this hot water system running and operating. 
So the reason behind the matrix ultimately is to stop scaling and rust of the pipes inside the um well the parts basically they're already rusting from the previous owner who was just experimenting on it basically i don't want to have you know the the camper van to be left standing and then when i come to use it after a while all my water's gone brown because there's rust in it so the whole point of this system is to basically make it um, like a, a coolant system on a vehicle I'm basically replicating a coolant system on a vehicle and that way I can put coolant in the actual system to stop oxidization and to stop rust basically and hopefully to stop scaling um, I don't know if I'm going to put a car coolant system in it at the moment I've just got some meth type stuff what was in an ice cream machine but that'll do for the mock-up but i'll probably just put car coolant system in it um when we come to do it properly okay so now you've seen this setup i'm going to use the magic fingers click them and we're going to end up in my garage all these pipes will be replaced and it, the system will be ready to fire up well hello now we're back in the garage everything's set up correctly so as you can see here we've got all the proper pipes plumbed in we've got the matrix elevated slightly so we can allow for convection of the water the heat rising the cold water going underneath replenishing the matrix shooting back up going around as such that's how i intend to heat my hot water tank up this here um, expansion tank was originally here, but because these pipes are not very flexible, it's better there. Um, I need to put the diesel in there first as well. I've forgotten to do that, but we've also got all the wiring systems set up. Most of the jumble of wires is behind that board. So we just have this control thing here that I need to do, use. Um, and we've got the temperature of the water which has come out of the tap basically so that is tap water temperature 19 degrees c so we need to see how the water rises in temperature this is what we're going to use for the power source and we can check out the amperages as we go along now you might not be able to hear me very well because i've changed my phone and they don't have a 3.5 jack to put my microphone in so i may have to shout over the noise because this will get very noisy this machine but yes i think that's it i think we're all set to go i've checked all the um jubilee clips are all tightened i've got to prime the pump with the diesel so i think what i'll do now is i'll get all that done off camera and then have a little go at it and then once i'm confident i'll i'll switch the phone back on at the camera and then We'll film it from start to finish. Just a quick catch up, I've primed the diesel, got the actual machine working but when it comes to the pump I'm going to have to redesign it because it can't, the airlock in here, it can't pull it through so I've got to lower this or lower something, change, redesign it um, so I'll be back so that the water flows into the pump easier. Right, that's it. I think I may have cracked it. Now I did get the machine up and running um, and I had a problem with the pump and that's why I went off camera to sort all this out. So this here is my solution. I've replaced the expansion tank with a proper expansion tank. I've not plumbed it up in the correct manner, but this way it will allow me, I'll just show you, for the, for the liquid to drain off into the pump so it will be gravity fed into the pump that was the problem i had with the airlock so i've got this now 
this should be the solution. I've put that back in there. I've put some clamps on to just elevate it slightly. Um, let's see what temperature it is. It's been overnight this, so the water's sitting at 17 degrees C now. And here's the other problem. My friend lent me um, a machine which would have um, powered the machine. Um, but we would have been able to monitor the amperage. But unfortunately, what I didn't realise was the amperage on that was, on the machine, was only two amps maximum. And this thing can rack up over 10. Now, David Lucky, the guy who I bought this off on his review, he was hitting 10 and a half amps, but he wasn't even using that pump there. He was using a, a different pump. Um, and a different power source so you can add onto his 10 plus um, you can add another one amp say for operating that because this is wired into this system so it will draw even more which is now coming from the battery so what I'm going to do is set it up get it going I had a little trial run yesterday now some of this liquid um, will some of these pipes should I say are still empty so this liquid will be drawn down and I will have to top it up with this as I go along until it starts coming out of here and then it will be full cycle when it comes out of this pipe which will drain back into here which will then come out of there and go around and around in a cycle and get hotter and hotter so let's see how this thing goes we'll fire it up and see how it is right now i've um i've already primed this up yesterday so it shouldn't need priming up but i have topped the diesel up in that jam jar which now means the first set of the pipe is going to have just air in it but the filter section should um take up that air so we should be all right so i'm going to just try and fire it up as it goes if i can remember how to do this so let's see everything's in place so press it once to light it up and activate it and then hold it down for three seconds and see how it goes. I can't hear no petrol pump, diesel pump ticking away so that's not good. Don't error on me like you did yesterday. The errors yesterday was because that machine, when the glow plug came on, um, basically the um, it, it overpowered, it overwhelmed the apparatus that was providing the electric source, so it, it shut off. Now this isn't shutting off, so I think, I can't test the draw on it now because I don't have an amperage meter, but um, it's still going, so that's hopeful. I think I might end up with some smoke soon if there's any excess diesel in the um burner doesn't seem to be a lot happening really doesn't seem to be a lot happening here Ooh. and that's the petrol pump making a noise we're firing up What's happening? Oh, we're firing up. Yesterday we had loads of smoke, but it looks like we're not having smoke today because it's already primed up the diesel. Right. Things are moving now. So I'll let this thing get warmed up and I'll get back to you when we're up and running fully now. Right. So I've left this thing on low, I've left it running for quite a while because um, this is the sort of setting that I will probably have it on in the van but I haven't activated the water system yet which, which is what this video is all about so I'm going to do that right now so I need to put this phone back on the stand because I'm going to need two hands to keep topping up this, um, this um, expansion tank as it draws the liquid in. Right, so what I'm going to 
we need to do is activate the pump. And I've forgotten how to do that now. I don't know if it's three seconds or... Th th I'm going to have to consult the manual here. I've forgotten. I'll just try it. Um, so I'll press it once to wake it up. And then press it for three. Oh, there it goes. Taking it down. Well, it seems like there's enough in it. Don't need to put any more in. I'll get you closer on that one. see now that there's steam rising from the bucket and this is all within 10 minutes admittingly it's only a small area it's heating it will be a 25 litre hot water tank that it's going to be heating next time but I reckon within half an hour of heating a 25 litre tank because this heat exchanger is so efficient um, I reckon within half an hour I will have hot enough water to shower in, absolutely. So I've cracked the machine up to sort of like halfway because everything's been running on the lowest power. So let's test the heat now. We've been running for about 15, 20 minutes now, but on low power see all the steam now. Oh, we're in Fahrenheit, let's change that. There you have it. All right, that is the right temperature for a shower within about 20 minutes. Admittingly it's a small tank, it would take a lot longer for a bigger tank. That's something I need to think about. Uh, the size of the tank really. 25 litres is my preferred size. You can see all the steam coming off now, can't you? Like I say, the expansion tank is only about 5 degrees hotter than above this heat exchanger, so it is very efficient in exchanging the heat from that's getting hot now that is where the mixer tap is going to come in and I'll be using cold water with the hot water in the shower so we're about half an hour in now and we're at 51 degrees C so I'm reckoning with a bigger a bigger tank we're going to be looking at an hour to get it nice and hot um, there is an issue with getting over 60 is it 60 65 degrees to kill viruses and various germs and um, which your tank needs every now and again to, to for the pipes and all that kind of stuff but I won't be heating I won't be using the um, diesel heater to bring the temperature up the water tank I'll be using is going to be a plastic um, tank which will go up to 70 degrees C so therefore I can raise the temperature enough, probably to be cheeky, 75, 80, to kill any germs off every now and again. But that will be done with a 1000 watt 240 element that will be fitted into the tank, like an immersion eater in a house, which can only be done on the buckle. So what I'm going to do now is power down the machine. Sounding success. This is the way forward for camper vans. Obviously, you will need to see my next video to see how it's actually integrated into the camper van with the tank insulation as well. Not insulation, installation. So, in order to turn this off, I need to turn that 
off. Oh no. That should have switched actually. I haven't turned the pump off because it's still rattling. I like this this expansion tank because I can see if the pump's turned off because there's no real indication. Turned it off and on again. Right, I'll try it now. It's not turning off. I'll take some getting used to this. Maybe if we do three seconds. One, two, three. There we go. Three seconds to turn it off. I'm assuming, likewise, for the actual heater. So the machine won't turn off straight away. What it'll do is power down. The burner's stopped, but this machine will continue running for five or 10 minutes. The fan will be running to cool down the cask inside that I showed you earlier on. That'll be red hot. That needs to cool down so the fan will keep cooling it down. So I'll be getting hot air for at least another five or 10 minutes yet. And then it will just power off after that. So, there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot more to see, a lot more interesting things that are going to be fitted into my van that are very unusual, including myself. <laughs> but anyway, see you soon. Just to give you an idea um, how much fuel this uses, it was filled to about here. So we've used this much in an hour. This is a Don Mayo sauce jar. So obviously when it's in a 10 litre tank, well that's just gonna go for weeks. <laughs>